Take a moment or two to think about a memory you never want to forget, a memory that is precious and cherished. For me, two life-changing events I never want to forget are the memories of the birth of my children and meeting them for the first time. Both were magical. So what memory are you thinking about? Dementia is an umbrella term that describes a lot of different brain disorders, of which Alzheimer's disease is the most common. And one of the things that happens in dementia, one of the many things, is that our precious memories can fade. Dementia can also cause other things like forgetting words and directions, personality change, disorientation, confusion, and physical changes like loss of balance and mobility. And dementia not only affects the person with dementia, but also the people in their lives. Every three seconds, someone in the world develops dementia. One, two, three. By the time I finish talking with you today, 300 people will have de developed a form of dementia. And by the end of the day, 27,000 people. That's a football stadium full of people every day. And the problem is growing. The World Health Organization tells us that the rates of dementia are set to triple by 2050. If it's not you living with dementia, it might be someone you love. And it may feel or seem that there's nothing you can do to reduce your risk of dementia, but that is not true. It's not a simple binary outcome of inevitable dementia versus no dementia. Dementia is not an inevitable result of aging or even genetics. There are things you can do every day that can lower your risk of dementia by a third or even more. You get a say in this. That memory you identified as precious before, that and other stories and information that connects you to who you are as a person, the people you love and to your community are all stored in your brain. Your ability to problem solve, communicate, move, breathe are all because of your brain. Your five senses, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, are all possible because of your brain. Your brain is also responsible for you somehow miraculously remembering the lyrics to that song you haven't heard for 20 years. And by looking after your brain, you are looking after you and what matters most to you. There are about 100 billion brain cells in the human brain and an average of 1,000 connections or synapses between them. The synapse is the point of connection between neurons, and it's here where chemical messages are conveyed and where memories are formed. And as a crude estimate, there are about 100 trillion connections in the human brain. To put these enormous numbers in context, there are more connections in the human brain than stars in our Milky Way galaxy. And when it comes to storing our memories and information, neurons combine to exponentially increase those connections and the brain's capacity. This makes our brain a magnificent organ with unlimited capacity and limitless potential. But with dementia, brain cells are steadily lost as time goes on. It's like the stars in your personal galaxy slowly blinking out. And depending on what type of dementia someone has, different parts of the brain, or if you like, different constellations are affected. And despite decades of research, drug trials, billions upon billions of dollars, and brilliant and dedicated people working on it, there is no known cure for dementia. I have a clear memory of my grandfather, my Gung Gung. He lived in Malaysia, was a father of five, grandfather of 11, and a serious and formidable business person. He really was fiercely intelligent and valued education, a generational gift he passed on to my mum and now to me, and I hope he would have been proud of me. He was diagnosed with vascular dementia in his 70s. And his symptoms progressed and progressed, as is the way with dementia. And I remember him at the later stages of his journey with significant memory loss, often singing in his living room with his wife of over 50 years, conducting an imaginary orchestra to Louis Armstrong. Even at his end stages, he loved Louis. It's a powerful memory. I was 12 years old, and at this formative time in my life, I remember thinking, why was this happening to him? Was there anything my brilliant, astute Gong Gong could have done to reduce his risk of dementia? And the answer is yes. And we call actively do things every day to lower our risk of dementia. You get a say in this. 
Dementia is a slow burn and it typically takes decades for the harmful proteins in your brain to accumulate, for brain cells to die and for thinking to deteriorate. And while there are risk factors that you can't manage like genetics or age, many risk factors can be controlled through appropriate treatments and lifestyle changes. So starting right now, no matter how old you are, you can and should make good choices every day to build your best brain and keep your stars shining. So let me now be your personal neuropsychologist and let's spend a day together making those good choices to build your best brain. We're going to talk about two key strategies. One is increasing or maintaining your best brain function and two is decreasing the actual damage to your brain. And to set our agenda for the day, I'm going to draw on research evidence, including a paper published in one of the top medical journals of the world, The Lancet, which has been informing the medical field for almost 200 years. The Lancet Commission on Dementia, Prevention, Intervention and Care found that 12 modifiable risk factors account for about 40% of worldwide dementia, which could then be theoretically prevented or delayed. Are we ready to start our day? Okay, your alarm goes off. Hopefully you have gotten between six to eight hours of good quality sleep if you're an adult. You need enough sleep so you wake up feeling refreshed. Sleep is essential for memory formation and also for the brain's glymphatic system to do its thing. The glymphatic system is a waste removal network. And if you don't get enough sleep, it doesn't have time to flush away the harmful proteins that can accumulate to cause dementia. So sleep is not a luxury, it's a medical necessity and key to reduce your risk of dementia. You are up and as it's breakfast, let's now talk about diet and nutrition to build your best brain. Your choices for breakfast and throughout your day are going to reflect a healthy, balanced, nutritious diet. A diet that is heart healthy and reduces inflammation. So remember this, what's good for the heart is good for the brain. The best evidence is for the Mediterranean diet, which means your diet should emphasize things like olive oil, nuts, vegetables, fish, and a moderate amount of cheese. Limit red meat and processed meat and food if you can, and eat and drink to lower your risk of diabetes, so not too much refined sugar. You can drink alcohol, but not too much. Actually, a diet um, of low to moderate alcohol use has been shown to reduce dementia risk if you're in your middle to late adulthood. And save yourself some money today and skip taking any vitamins or supplements to lower your risk of dementia. There is no high quality evidence that these work, including for ginkgo biloba, lion's mane mushroom, polyunsaturated fatty acids, vitamins E or B, curcumin, turmeric, selenium, zinc or copper. You're better off getting that stuff from your high quality nutritious diet. What you are better off spending your money on is a pair of good shoes, as during your day, you're going to be as physically active as you can, including reducing how much time you sit, especially if you're middle-aged. And while we don't have, and we likely won't ever have, a one-size-fits-all prescription or dose for what physical activity we should do, the key message is move in whatever way feels good for you. The World Health Organization recommends 30 minutes a day for at least five days a week. Exercise helps keep you within a healthy weight range for your body type, reduces cardiovascular risk, reduces diabetes risk, improves mood, and also has direct brain impacts, including on something called hippocampal neurogenesis, which means making new neurons in an area of the brain really important for memory. So again, what is good for the heart is good for the brain. Keep active and keep moving. During your day, reduce your stress levels if you can and look after your mental health. Seek help for traumatic events and feelings of depression, anxiety and overwhelm as these have been shown to increase your dementia risk. And they also affect your ability to engage in socially engaging and mentally stimulating activities. And speaking of which, when it comes to your brain, use it or lose it is a real thing. So during your day, keep your brain active, grow those connections and grow new personal stars in your brain galaxy. This is called building a cognitive reserve. If your galaxy has enough stars, 
Even if some do blink out, there'll still be plenty of light. Lifelong learning is important, just like what you are doing here today. And it's important to keep your brain active during the day to stimulate your brain. So there is some evidence for brain training, like apps, puzzles, or games, just as they keep your brain stimulated. So throughout your day, do new things, learn new things, and do old things differently. For example, you could learn a language or learn an instrument or even use your non-dominant hand to navigate your phone or tablet or even stir a pot. But the message is keep your brain wiring and firing. During your day, stay socially active as well. This promotes beneficial behaviours, reduces loneliness and enhances and promotes positive mood and well-being. We are a social species. Think back to that memory you identified as precious at the start. Did it involve somebody else? In many instances, it likely did. You can also enhance your cognitive reserve by combining those three things I mentioned, physical activity, social stimulation, and cognitive stimulation, by doing things like walking to a book club or joining a dance class or traveling to a new place. And before we reach the end of the day today, let's talk about the second key strategy for dementia prevention. That is reducing the actual damage to your brain. Throughout your day, whatever you choose to do, protect your brain from damage, including from brain injuries and infection. The more damage your brain endures, both mild and more serious, the more risk it has of something like dementia developing. So drive safely, work safely, play safely. Wear a helmet, wear a seatbelt, and protect your ears from excessive noise. Also, don't smoke. And if you smoke, please consider quitting. Smoking is bad for your brain and body and increases cardiovascular risk. It also increases air pollution. Air pollution has been associated with increased risk of dementia. So as much as you can, breathe clean air, including limiting exposure to dust, dirt, smoke and soot and toxic chemicals. As we reach the end of the day, uh, I'd just like to also remind you, if you need one, wear a well-fitting, high-quality hearing aid as this continues to stimulate your brain and connect you to your world. And as we reach the end of the day, you're going to brush your teeth really well and make sure you're on top of your dentist appointments to make sure that you're on top of things like periodontal disease, which has been so to increase dementia. And think about whether you're on top of your doctor's appointments and other health checks to ensure you're managing your health. And it's really important to, to make sure you take any prescribed medications, including ones for lowering um, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and for mood, for so many of the reasons that I've mentioned today. And as we come full circle to end our day to get our good quality sleep, you know you've made good choices to have a brain-boosting dementia prevention day. And I hope that even when your friendly neuropsychologist isn't following you around, you will continue to make these good choices. It's important to mention that sometimes our lifestyles don't actively support us to make these good choices, and it isn't always easy to make good choices for your brain. For example, so many of our jobs, including mine, involve a lot of sitting, and sometimes food that isn't as healthy for us is more accessible or cheaper than those that are. We live in a neon-lit, fast-paced, stressful culture, and sometimes sleep is sacrificed and busyness glorified. We also know that even though everyone in the world should have the best chance at a healthy brain, there is unequal access for things that reduce dementia risk. These are the social and economic determinants of health, and these include things like where you were born, to what social and economic class, how where you live is designed, and what this means in terms of accessing health care and health information, high quality affordable education and fresh food and air. So if you can't do any of the things I mentioned for whatever reason, it's okay, it's not your fault. You start where you can and do what you can. There is no known cure for dementia. Don't wait for a groundbreaking cure. We don't have one and the brain is so complex that we aren't likely to have one anytime soon. But dementia is not an inevitable result of aging. You get a say in this. The groundbreaking thing that can make a difference is you. Is you making good choices to build your best brain every day and to shape your future brain health. It's never too early or too late to start. The most important thing is to just start. Your brain is what makes you, you. 
including holding your precious memories. So stay on the path to preventing dementia and keep your stars shining.